you want to take us in? Uh, I take us into seven. Oh, questions, wow. So, so now yeah, I this, have is, this is all you. Get your right. Get your Popping fucking hot. Voice. <laughs> get your hot voice going and make it happen. Ooh. Hot <laughs> voice. Mm. We have a better baritone here. Mm. We do. So I'm not even going to try this uh, sultry voice. Okay. Because I'd be put to shame. So what are you going to do? Complete and utter shame. Welcome to Bacon is my podcast! Bacon! Bacon is my podcast! Bacon! Bacon! Bacon is my podcast! Welcome to Bacon is my podcast, the only podcast brought to you by a collection, including drinkwildbills.com, poddex.com, and grillyourassoff.com, where you can do things like grill, drink soda, and read off questions from decks of cards, mm -hmm. all for 10% off by using the promo code BACON. Indeed, and you could also keep your balls shiny oh, at the same yes. time. With the lawnmower 4.0 mm -hmm. by Manscaped. Uh -huh. Promo code BACONPOD for 20% off and free shipping. They've yeah, got a lot should. more than just this. They've got their crop cologne, mops. They've got the crop mops. They got their all the things. Crop mops. But we're we're not gonna we're not gonna talk too much about this. No, we already said it. We already said it. Go to baconismypodcast.com, check out all the sponsors and check out all the deals. Indeed. Yes. Uh, also big shout out to the BIM Squad. Bear 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 over on Patreon.com, our squad, our friends, our peoples that uh, help out the show a little bit more. They help out with uh, a small a small monthly donation. Indeed. But that donation gets you Extra episodes, commercial-free episodes, uh, live stuff, tastings, uh, cooking episodes, whatever we can think up, anything that we so can do. So much additional content. It's all there for you, so check it out, patreon.com slash bacon is my podcast. But, today. Crossover. Today, we're doing a crossover. And not only are we doing a crossover, but we're doing a crossover where the, both ep episodes are coming out at the same day. Yeah. Craziness. So, if you haven't listened to... Emo Social Club. Right. Pause. Well, we were just live on Emo Social Club. We were live on the on their, their Twitch. On their Twitch. So if you did, didn't see that, yeah. if you were sleeping on that, you're an asshole. I mean, I'm sorry. Well, maybe you were tired. You were busy. You, you were busy. Yeah, you were tired. tired busy. You had things. Long day. Oh, listen. Hey, I got All these things. Yeah. I get it. Different time zone. But yeah. you might not get what's happening on the crossover episode unless you listen to that episode right so go to emo social club that's who we have on our podcast yeah we have it was a long Lizzie, night we have we brian continued it there's some there's some jokes that go throughout the whole thing yeah. but either way it was a lot of fun they were fun they're cool people to hang out with cool people to talk to they've got a great podcast yeah that has um i mean some of the some of the guests that we've had on um as well, they have also had on. They've also had on, yeah. And and they're cool in the way that uh, we try to be. We try to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, Lizzie Brian, emo social club, part two. Brian, Brian! part Dux. Yeah, check it out. Right about. Wait, we were talking about Jay Z. Yeah. So it's about to go down. I was letting you do it. Oh, down. Now, nah. fucker. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> hey! <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Bacon. This is my podcast. Today we've got Brian. We've got Lizzie B. We've got Emo So Club hanging out with us. This is after we hung out with them, right? So if you. Okay, we're going to go into things, and there's a good chance we throw stuff back about the last episode that we just did with them. And if you don't listen to it, you might be lost. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you should go listen to that immediately first, and then follow them and give them five-star reviews. And all yes, those. and then all come back things. to this, and, and then, then go, back to this. okay, now I know what they're going to talk we about. We accept it. You can pause. Right. Now I'll pause. give five stars here. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know where exactly. you're going. It's a, you know, it's a back and forth type of thing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. 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 It's Dutch do a, little, do a little time travel. So mm-hmm. uh, Brian and Lizzie are from Chicago. They are a uh, wonderful podcast, which I, I actually, it's funny because, you know, we were talking about in your episode how we do research and stuff like that. And quite a few times I've been able to do research by listening to your podcast. Yes. Which hmm. is fucking awesome because i do listen <laughs> to some of the other podcasts and some of them can be the drizzling shits hmm. Hmm. or um we don't drizzle harder yeah. to deal with harder to hmm. deal with sure. yeah okay sure. all right but yeah you guys uh i'm super excited to have you guys on because uh i know that we'll get a good episode a good interview with you because you guys get really great I- interviews out of your guests so, I mean, don't I'm blow gonna, it. Yeah, don't blow yeah, it. Yeah, don't blow it. Yeah, the, the, the bar the is set. The bar is set. No pressure. Yeah. He totally, um, he totally oversold it now. So now, yeah, yeah. But like, you guys got a fucking rule. So, <laughs> so you you know how we approach the the interview process. How do you guys approach the interview process and the vetting for your podcast? I go, Lizzie. Do, are they good? Yeah. And then she goes, yeah. And then I go, cool, send them an email. <laughs> uh, that's that's exactly how it goes. So because I'm the one who's more online, like on Twitter and TikTok, things like that. I'm the one usually like manning our, our, our Twitter accounts and our TikTok accounts. And I'm the one that's also on Twitter in general. So I'll see like what's trending and what's growing and what's hitting the scene before anything else. Also, as somebody who just works in radio, I listen to a lot of radio and new music. So I'm always kind of like really quick to find out what's coming up. So I always like to tell Brian, like, this is what the kids like. You don't know what they, who they are, but the kids like it. We'll get listens. We'll get people to come and view. So that's usually it's how so we pitch ages. it. And then I, <laughs> Even I go. Even booking process. <laughs> so I go and I'll like email whomever we need to email um, and hope for the best and be like, hey, what's up? Um, we want to do this. And then. From there, I usually pull notes or sometimes Alice, our producer, will pull notes depending on how busy we are. And like I do the same thing. I'll listen to podcasts. I'll listen. I'll look at old articles. I'll look at old tweets. I'll go stalk their Facebook profile if I can't find that much about them. I have resort to stalking LinkedIn profiles sometimes um, just to find out more information. I've done friends of friends to see if I can find more if there's like nothing there. Um so that's just it's just like normal research type of methods right, right. that I, I personally do a lot of the times. And I'm like, here you go, Brian. Here's the <laughs> here's, here's the what stub. you need to know about this band. So Lizzie's the- like the you. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. We also will stalk a lot of things. I'll stalk like like everything. Right. So- every- like I know Lizzie has a three point seven five GPA. <laughs> like I know that. Mm-hmm. And you know I, that it hurts her that she couldn't get that four. I was and literally I, I was gonna half ask, a point away from being how, in whatever the, the summa cum laude thing. I don't know what the fuck it was. I was how, so close. They didn't round feel? up. How does that Mad. feel, ageist? We found out you're an ageist. And maybe no. because yeah. you're so judgy, that's why you couldn't get that other point two five. <laughs> See, the what I don't understand, <laughs> you're, you're so young, right? Mm-hmm. You're yeah. so young. And we're all so old. Mm-hmm. So why, like, Emo was more a thing way back in the day, you know, in the olden times. Right. So, like, why, why, why emo? The time before. (laughs) The time before my time. Oh, I guess emo social club because when I was in high school, I really got more and I got into like my chemical romance, so like the mall goth emo type of thing. Uh And I really liked Evanescence. And my dad torrented Fall Out Boy, Sink This to Your Grave, put it on my iPod when I was like eight years old. So. I am like, I was like in it before I even knew what it was. So me being a fucking nerd when I was in high school, I'm like, well, if I'm listening to something and enjoying it, I should know more of the history and backstory of it. So I checked out a bunch of books on punk because there wasn't really any email books at the time when I was in high right. school in like 2009. So when I started high school, so I was like, oh, it's all punk, but it all goes into it. So I like just checked out a bunch of books about the history of punk rock and like the evolution of it. Um, just so I know what the, what it was, so I understood what I was consuming and listening to. So that's so why I'm here. How did how did you find this fossil, Brian? <laughs> oh, we Brian. I I interned for the place he uh, used to be a part of one of his cover bands for, and he said, "Hey, um, 
you have a broadcasting degree. I want to start a podcast that I have a name for it. And I was like, okay, cool. Oh yeah. I, I, nice. I had a name. That yeah, was he it. had the name. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. He had a name too. That's hey. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan, me and you, bud. <laughs> the biggest thing about starting a podcast is just having a name and just going, mm-hmm. I guess I'll just talk to somebody on a microphone for a couple hours. <laughs> so you, you alluded to you were in a bunch of bands. Like, how many bands? And, and are any of them original that, that we'd be willing to talk to you about it? Otherwise, we're just going to make fun of you for being in the cover band. Right, right. You, can, you, can, you can make fun of me for being in an original band, too. It's, it, that's also okay. <laughs> But yeah, you have to make fun of me for being in cover bands. Um, it was kind of like you know, you know, I, I kind of could see on the horizon that like emo and and uh, the nostalgia part of it was gonna start coming back around. Like obviously, yeah. people were getting um, sadder, and it seemed like it was just right around the time when like <laughs> yeah, you're probably gonna want some like sad music. And, right. Yeah. Uh, it also was like a lot of the bands just weren't doing anything anymore. I mean, my chem was broken up and. Uh, Panic of the Disco was kind of like, you know, doing Panic of the Disco things. I'm a fan of Panic of the Disco, but obviously you're not doing a fever you can't sweat out every night. So it's it's like I mean, we are uh, going to see Panic of the Disco the second night of Riot Fest yeah, though. And they're so. not gonna do any of those songs. They're gonna hit it off with I Ride Sins <laughs> and that's it. And and I think Fever You Can't Sweat Out is like one of the greatest records of all time. So I for me it was like I wanna do like fun shit with all this old music for like the bands that aren't doing it anymore. And I know that this nostalgia thing is going to come back. So it's like, yeah, let's start an emo cover band. And it took off pretty well. Uh, and well, then, I, I mean, it, to- depending on when you're doing it, like if you were one of the first, because now now everybody, there's that now, Warped yeah. Tour band, there's this, there's yeah. that. Um, but if you were one of the first, obviously, you hit a niche. You yeah. hit a yeah. niche. And that that's what a you need to big niche, too. Yeah. Oh, dude, I hit it. I hit that niche hard. Um, I, I mean, I mean, obviously, like you, you know, the business gets in the way of you know the cover band world, real cutthroat business, uh, just fighting for the smallest piece of the dumbest pie. I and- had, I had a, I had a <laughs> band member who, I, like my last band, who was in cover bands. I tortured him relentlessly about being in a cover band and stuff. And then when I finally left and the band had broken up, he's like, I'm just going to do cover stuff. It's just that much easier. And now here we are like two plus years later. And he's like, dude, it is worse than the original (laughs) band world. It is Mm -hmm. far worse. So, yeah, I I hear you on that. You make money. Like you show up, you do dumb shit and you just like have fun with your friends and you make way more money than original bands do because people want to like especially the bars that book you are like, yeah, we want cover bands. We don't want original bands. And I'm like, have I got a treat for you? Oh my God. (laughs) Uh, I did have an original band way, way back in the day. Uh, A couple of the guys from that band were in the emo cover band with me. So it was kind of like a, you know, bringing it back around. Uh, And you can make fun of the old band. It's called shotgun zombie. We were way ahead of our time. And you know, we, I, we were the Sega dreamcast of the electro metal (laughs) core. world where it's like man you you really were on to something here sega but unfortunately just too early uh so too, like too many sonic adventures so if you were <laughs> is it a lot like horse the band we were trying to be enter shikari and by enter, by trying to be i mean ripping off enter shikari almost exactly <laughs> oh, okay. um but then like i listen to a lot of stuff now and i go we fucking did that like we just were <laughs> right. doing that shit like I was I sent Lizzie a, a song today that's like hyper pop, hip hop, like super weird. And I'm like, dude, I kinda did this shit. I like, kinda did. I was writing like the weirdest synth lines and like I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but like I wanna I did say this. the thing that Brian sent me was the first thing that I had woken up to. Like mm-hmm. I woke up, checked my messages. I that was the first thing I heard this mm-hmm. morning. Loud, and abrasive, I was like, a man with a chainsaw. Yeah, I was like, mustache. why does this man have a chainsaw? And we were talking about Shadow the Hedgehog having a gun, and I'm like, we're is this a part Shadow of the, the bit or no? No, we're not talking about Shadow the Hedgehog with a gun. <laughs> I find, I find myself. Why, why wouldn't they have a chainsaw? Setting, <laughs> so like, yeah, well, Shadows. I mean, yeah, he's a villain. Gun. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I find myself sending like 
because obviously the good shit happens at night and I'm a father. So my life happens in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'll spend the night recording a demo or song, whatever. And the first thing he wakes up to is, is those songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause I sent it to him at 8am. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't, he hasn't complained. No, no. I respond at 1030 after I get up. Yep. Yeah, but I, I can only imagine like, that. What were like, you doing at eight AM? Why? <laughs> Stop. What is that? But I, I, what's what's the name of the uh, emo cover band? And is that you played a wedding? Is that what you played with? Like the the emo cover band? Yeah, it was most of that band. It's a new band now. Uh, so the old band was called Taking Back Emo. And they're still doing some stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I've, yeah, they did the prom and the stuff like that. I saw yeah. some of the old uh, flyers yeah. and stuff. Yeah, we did. We did all of that fun stuff. Uh, and then they're still doing it and Godspeed. Uh, I'm sure they're having a fun time, but the, uh, the new one is just kind of like, I don't know. I, I do think the, now that we're like deep into the nostalgia period, I'm like, yo, we are like way too saturated. And like you were saying about original music, I'm like, it's kind of coming back around now that the pandemic has happened. Like mm-hmm. you don't need cover bands because a lot of people know a lot more original music. There's mm-hmm. a lot more new bands that have come out. There's a lot of artists that have like created really good like emo pop punk music. Like, yeah. why would you go see a cover band when you could? And also, like, the day that Mike Henry announced, it was like uh, uh, mm-hmm. probably like almost a year that I that I quit the band. Right. And I was like, man, I would really fucking hate to be in a My Chemical Romance cover band right about now. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's yeah. just no way. It's yeah, like it's that- all game over for me now. Yeah. Yeah, I, I always found that like interesting because because we see a lot of like every once in a while like an interesting band will pop up like a Weezer cover band. It's like cool. Uh, I can still see they Weezer. exist. You can go see Weezer. They're a thing. Yeah, they are. They're <laughs> they're still they're around. They're a thing still. Um, but we're but, on Long Island, so there's cover bands for everything. It's like, right. Yeah. Yeah. There's it's an awful. Incubus band. There's like there's everything. There's Incubus like, played Sunday. Right, yeah. yeah, and there's an incubus mm-hmm. band. At least there's a cover band, right? In case you missed it, thank God. Um, I guess you can see it more often, you know. In case you missed sure. it, yeah, you can compare them uh, day by yeah. day. Yeah. Oh man, that was definitely not actual incubus, but they played their songs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I tell you what, this was not as good as incubus. Yeah. Listen, you can hear "Drive Again" for a second time. If you Don't can. Drive. <laughs> Don't do it. If you're, in a, if, you're in a, if you're in an incubus cover band, just just stick to the bigger non-drive hits. <laughs> Yeah, I fucking love Incubus, Deeper, by the way. Deeper like, Shade of Green. I also love Incubus, by the way. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so before we get off the cover band co- talk, because mm-hmm. uh, one thing that I do, you can tell ask, that I really want to get off the cover band. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but like, so, so again, Don't say that. this, He's this keep friend you of mine. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Keep blushing, buddy. <laughs> uh, no, but so my butt uh, again. The same guy telling me oh it's more cutthroat this and that do you find that um trying to book places are there are they now asking cover bands what kind of draw do you have no uh okay and and for the most part like we had problems we wanted to play more venues we didn't want to play the bar scene because it's the bar scene you know if you if you're normally going to a local bar and seeing cover bands there that are playing like nineties alternative, which is my other cover band. So we would always play those shows too. Uh, nineties alternative or, or like a a boy band cover band or, um, you know, just like basic pop cover band, whatever. It's like, that's the kind of shit you're going to that bar for. And then we show up and all of a sudden I'm screaming Hawthorne Heights at you. And you're like, what the fuck is this? We don't like this. We don't want this to be happening. Do you right. know any Red Hot Chili Peppers? And I get so upset, just right. so angry. <laughs> right. uh, so I, I, I think that it's I'll also. I'll never forget like, that time that you did that Red Hot Chili Peppers cover set. I was so mad. I was so mad we were doing it, but we got hired for it for like a year. Just stopped that way through and just was like, "I'm done. I'm done." I was like, "What am I saying right now? Fried fish flipper with a fried fish flipper? Who gives a shit, Anthony? <laughs> Who gives a the shit?" Core. I love that yeah. you have a you have a great Chili Peppers fan right here. As well. I look, I was really okay, into the, them the before last, I learned all the their last songs. Record, 
the last record. Uh, well, no, the one before John came back. Okay. Hot garbage. Okay, yeah. I, unlistenable. Mm -hmm. Everything else, I, I've I've only seen them live seventeen times. Okay. I only that have 18th time Peppers. though, that's going to change your change your mind. I've only had everything. I have a I have a red hot chili peppers tattoo here, right on the heart, right on my heart, right over your heart. Oh my god! Look, I'm, I'm not right trying here. to talk mad shit about him, but also I'm right I here just... and I'll say just to save you from everything, just to just to just to take a little bit of the, the cut. Uh, best chili peppers guitarist by far, Dave Navarro. <laughs> hot take. I'm gonna step away on my drink. <laughs> <laughs> that is a hot take. I think Dave um, Navarro live, is the best anyway. Jane's Addiction guitarist for sure. Absolutely. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. 100%. Lizzie, for these sure. are all bands from the 1980s. Um, so sorry. I know. But they also trickled over into the <laughs> I know those are more my dad's bands. <laughs> they also trickled over into 2022. Like, also, shit, man. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah, good call. Oh, I yeah, mean, trickling. I'm aware of them. I, I'll <laughs> never <trickles>. forget. <laughs> I'll never forget, like, when I was working my, my former gig. That I had, it was like choosing. It was like helping choose music for some of the our rock alternative stations, and they sent a Flora Cash song that was that mm -hmm. they were like, "Should we have this?" They were like a one hit wonder. I was like, "I mean, like it's okay, like it'll fit with the kids and like our alt, like quote unquote alt style that we have now." And one of the programming directors, this was a huge issue, responded, "Well, I only really listen to like '90s alt, so I'm not a good." And I'm like, "Why are you in charge of picking the music for a radio station then?" <laughs> Right. <laughs> what? What's your qualifications again? Nineties. <laughs> I lived in or around the nineties. I've I have, seen a ninety in a year. I've, yes. <laughs> yeah. The number nine is a, a whole magic ninety. Number. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's up, guys? Going to talk to you a little bit about our sponsors, real quick. Just want to start off with GrillYourAssOff.com. If you are going into grilling season like we are, then you know that you always need a little rub. You always need a little sauce. You need something that's gonna help your grilling get better. Help those chicken breasts, right? Ooh. They get a little dry sometimes. You wanna make sure you're saucing them up. You wanna make sure those ribs have got a nice dry rub and a sauce rub. Go to grillyourassoff.com, check it out. I've used their stuff, it's delicious. 10% off with the promo code BACON. Another place you can go to to get 10% off with that promo code, drinkwildbills.com. Mm. They've got delicious sodas. They've got all sorts of different flavors from sarsaparilla to birch beer to you name it. You got your root beers. You got your cream sodas. You got your cream sickles. Yeah. Uh, Sugar-free for you guys. Sugar Watch the waistline. Indeed. And also... They've got some great jerky stuff. They've mm. got oh, the brisket bites are A plus. Indeed. A plus. And if you go there, go to drinkwildbills.com, use the promo code BACON, get 10% off. One more place you can use that same promo code BACON is our oldest sponsor, Poddex. If you're a podcaster, if you are a budding interviewer, if you are just somebody that has a hard time talking to people every now and then or want to do something fun with your friends check out poddex.com they have these decks of cards 50 cards per deck 50 questions check it out learn things about your friends learn things about people learn how to talk a little bit more and be a little bit more comfortable always use the promo code bacon again to get 10 percent off your order they got cool swag too indeed and last but not least of course always frame the balls mm, yes is that what you do? Frame the balls. Frame the balls? Well, you could. You could frame the balls. You could. Though. You could. But if you got a bush, it's just not. It's the summer. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Yeah. Use the lawnmower 4.0. Use the perfect package and go to manscaped.com. Use the promo code BACONPOD. You get 20% off your order. And they've got all sorts of great stuff if you're a guy who's looking to feel so fresh and so clean. Indeed. And not only do you get 20% off, but you also get free shipping. Free so, shipping? Shine up those balls, get rid of that bush, clean yourself up. And if Indeed. you don't clean yourself up, start. Yeah. Bacon Pod, 20% off, free shipping. Check it out. Thank you to our sponsors. 
Thanks for hanging out. What's your bacon? I have an emo hot take. Yes. Perhaps. Uh, best emo band, The Used. I love The Used. I do love The Used. A lot. I love The Used, too. I'm, the, I'm that guy with the with the table and the little little oster tag in the front that says, mm-hmm. fight me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I want to fight you. I'm that Because uh, I mean. love the use. Yeah. I don't think uh I don't think it's that hot. Because I do think that like yeah. if we're talking like if we're talking like what is emo, right? Like I think if you said here's the use, somebody would go, Okay, I get it, right? Right. I think Mike Chem took that torch and ran with it. Mm-hmm. But I do think the use came first and they, they did their thing first and uh he was on the Osborne's <laughs> MTV and uh that was another 90s show by the way Liz. yeah it was Liz, Lizzie, that was, a 90s. <laughs> that was i know my my parents <laughs> i have Osborne younger parents so my parents watched that stuff <laughs> ozzy osborne was a singer from the 70s yeah who also did well for himself in the 80s his, and first, the 90s. his full name and the 90s. is osborne osborne i know my listen my my dad listens to all that stuff so <laughs> <laughs> So you're cultured. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Culture. At least you're cultured. He's a cultured ageist. So, Lizzie, since you went in to study emo and ended up studying punk, right? What do you think, as a as a learned, well-read person, what would you say if someone asked what, like, okay, so what was the first emo bands? Like, what would you categorize as, like, the, the bands that created emo? Not like I could see the used as being like the best that argument. Right, but I'm that, saying that like took, who was first? Yeah, right. Who changed it? I were to think the first like person to really create it has to go to like Rights of Springs because then morphed from hard, like the '80s DC hardcore okay. into Rights of Springs and the emo, and then you have bands on like Sunny Day Real Estate, and you also have like the Get Up Sunny Kids, Day, yeah. like very yeah. early stuff like that. So you have that, but I feel like the one that I've seen so consistently, at least two of them, bridge the gap between modern mall emo and like the OGs of like mm-hmm. the late 80s and the early and like the 90s is most likely going to be Jimmy E. World and Hawthorne Heights. Mm-hmm. Those are the two that I consistently okay. see that everybody across the board will agree to like, yep, that's emo. Like, even though some people classify Jimmy World's more pop punk, people will still say, no, they're emo. Hawthorne Heights. Some of their stuff was like more pop punky sounding, like Skeletons. I love that album. But a lot of people will still say, yeah, their early stuff, that is emo. Like that is OG emo sounding. And that's what we all kind of agree upon, I feel. Like I never really have to argue with people about Hawthorne Heights being Hundo P emo. I don't have to argue with people about Jimmy Eat World being Hundo P emo. Now, do I have to argue with people about Fall Out Boy or The Use or My Ken being emo? Yeah, I do. So I think like those are the two that are like, they bridge the gap for everybody. I, I feel like the, the other thing too, when it comes to like pop, uh, pop punk or punk, emo, screamo, uh, metalcore, even mm-hmm. like it's just it's so blurred because mm-hmm. you got like yeah, you got one your of those story lines. of the years. It's AFI like, emo. You got you got yes, like four years strong. You got so it's such a broad thing, like uh, you know. We we were on uh, Jacques' show, uh, Pop Punk and Pizza, and he was and he was talking about to us about like, well, you know, like you gravitated toward Pop Punk and Pizza. What what's your Pop Punk experience? And it's just like, you know, it, it it's so broad. Yeah. Like I I prefer that heavier end of things, whereas you might I not prefer more of the poppier end. Um, of things. So yeah, I just, I just find like the 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 genre of emo. Um, while some people give it like a like a stigma or whatever it is, and and like some people embrace it, some people are like, "Oh, you're so emo," but like it's such a huge umbrella, and there's so many good bands behind that. It, it, it's just like it, it just transcends so many things. So like, I, well, I don't it know. became its own thing, kind of the way grunge did. You know, like mm-hmm. eventually, grunge became. Um, a, a t-shirt style at Target, mm-hmm. right? And they were like, here's your grunge shirt. Or, you know, in their catalog, <laughs> they have the grunge section, right? But it was a, it's a style that encompasses 
a broad amount of bands that are all different genres really if you go into it there there are varying levels of different genres where they yeah there's elements of each in each thing but it's like it's almost like between these years and these years if you had guitars and you didn't and you had a singer that wasn't clean you were grunge you know and between these years and these years if you had heavy guitars you were emo and if you were eyeliner you were emo but if you were eyeliner and had heavy guitars between this area and this area then you're a hair band and if you had this it's like all these weird little genres that was, was sick as monday in. emo we tried to be oh, okay we we wanted he to, used be, to wear lots of guy liner. we wanted to be oh, afi yeah. so oh, yeah. bad same same dude oh my god <laughs> yeah. I still I just, want to be. I want to be so uh, bad. Just personally. Yeah. Me, me too. I. Yeah. Me too. We we had a discuss like the intro for one of our older episodes was talking about, man, Davey Havoc. Dude, dude coolest is old as fuck. Ever. Lizzie, coolest he's old ever. as fuck, but he but he's he's good looking dude. Coolest motherfucker ever. He's still cool. Davey, still no, I like good. AFI, so I yeah. I know Davey Havoc. Yeah, yeah, he's old though. Yeah. Is that okay? Well, he because no. he was is, is <laughs> she would say no, <laughs> but that's that's is AFI emo or is AFI post hardcore or is AFI no. you know, no, like no. or is AFI because they tiptoed in everything and they came out before emo, but they were huge during emo and they had the look and they had the you know they they wrote songs that that were sad and they appealed to people that were going through shit and so is that all it takes or. Or you know, or is everything based off of like a dashboard vocal? You know, does this, mm -hmm. does an emo song have to have a for you in it somewhere? Like what? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> there were a lot of for yous. We make yeah. fun of them in rehearsals. Every now and then we'll play a bunch of cool. We're like da da da, da for you, and then because da, 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 da. <laughs> there was a lot of that. It's just it, it's every fucking song. It's a lot. There's a lot of those. <laughs> But then you have these standout bands and, you know, like the use is one and my chem is another one and, and Hawthorne Heights is another one and AFI was another one and these cornerstone bands, but they don't necessarily all have that same sound the way that some other like uh, music genre styles that were linked to eras have where like a lot of those bands kind of sounded the same. You, you don't, you get that with some of them. Sure. But like, there were a lot of really distinct bands out there yeah. during the emo stuff. You know, it was like my chemical romance was out there doing stuff where they were, they were like the queen of emo stuff, you know? Okay. And, and it was and doing brilliant shit like that. And so it's, it's just interesting to me to try and go back through it and go like, okay, when did it start and who was it and who qualifies, <laughs> who doesn't qualify and, what does it all mean? What does it all mean? What does it all mean? <laughs> Can I give you a, a brain moment? Yes. Not a. I'm, I don't think it's going to blow your brain, but I'm just going to say a brain moment. Blow my oh brain, my God. Uh, the internet, because now all of a sudden you have all the music available to you at all the time. Okay. Uh, and you can download it, throw it right on a shuffle device, and then just press play. And you've got a bunch of bands that you might be interested in. You might just find a band on LimeWire and be like, I'm going to go and pay the artist and also download this. Right. Because we don't steal. But uh, <laughs> having that sort of culture of listening to music growing up and not having to define it by what other people listen to or how people said it, like, this is what it is. This is what this music genre is. We're going to try to sell you this. It's like you could just find all of it. There were a bunch of bands that were getting their stuff on the Internet people were getting it for free and just listening and falling in love during their nostalgia years, which obviously then bleeds into right. what we have now. Mm -hmm. But I think just like that internet culture, just like it started, like it started before the internet and then the internet took it and said, now everybody can have all the things that they like all together, all at once at random, like in between one another. And then it's like, I just like bands and I wear black and I shop at a hot topic and right, now I'm right. at the concert. Now I'm at the warp tour and I'm seeing all the bands like yeah. it, it, it kind of democratized that like genre line and said anybody can be anything whenever they that want. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah, you can yeah. See that. That's, that's a really Because I thing. think the used was like the last of, for me anyway, um, the last of the bands where I would wander into like 
uh, a tower or a virgin records and i would look for like oh who's the 999 band mm-hmm. you want to check out thing on the wall where i can throw the headphones on and i bought the first used record based off of that mm-hmm. but i think that was the last of those before i just started finding everything online yeah. yep so that makes a lot of sense yeah yeah you kind of blew my mind brian yeah I, that, that is i want to give you a brain moment a brain <laughs> moment a blew brain moment brain. for sure yeah brian Jeez, blew my brain re- <laughs> and that is an emo band name yeah. brian yeah. blew my brain i like that every um, brian is emo that's just true we all have to deal with this. <laughs> so we, we did talk about like trying to get guests and stuff like that and throwing shit against the wall and stuff. But I do find that that you guys, uh, I mean, after you get to a certain point, you don't really have to look for guests anymore. Like, I, I, I you know, I'm not trying to like flex on anybody, but like we don't have to, <laughs> we don't have to like worry about like, okay, do we have enough guests to like, Right, have our yeah, schedule yeah. filled out and stuff like mm-hmm. that, and and I do see that you guys work with a lot of the PR people that we work with and oh, yeah. stuff like that. So, what at, at what point did did like did it get really cool that you started getting like newer bands and other things happening and and like for me, I I just love like you get ten emails in the morning and you're like cool. I'm going to start a playlist and you, and you just like start playing shit on Spotify while you're trying to work your normal job and stuff. So like, is that where you guys are at? Obviously you are, but like, <laughs> how cool is that for you guys? How did it feel the first time you got to say no? Oh man. Oh we, man. We, we don't really like say no, wait, wait, wait. I guess. We're, we're, we're trying to figure it out. We're trying to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, how to say No. So, um, oh, I know how to say it. <laughs> I know how to say it. I love yes. uh, diplomatically. Diplomatically. <laughs> you sure? Uh, nah. You, nope. you guys, you guys no don't way. get any like. No, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't suggest people I know to listen to this. <laughs> That's the text I got. That this was a week. new one that I sent you. <laughs> yeah. Huh. <laughs> I didn't like, think that. so. Yeah, I did. Send Do you guys that. get no, that I mean, at all? There's people that will get sent that are like, oh, this is absolutely like not what it is or what we what we do at all. Um, And then we just kind of don't respond. In my previous experience, like working with PR and then also like working in college radio, like, yeah, you take whatever you can get. But now it's like, oh, I know I don't need to respond or say no, because it's going to clutter their inbox as much as it's cluttering Mm -hmm. mine with a band that like literally does nothing for me personally, whatever that may be. Right. So we can be more choosy, but I think also at the same time, like it's a strategy thing at the end of the day too. It's like, if we know that somebody we work with is in a PR company and they have like maybe three like top tier roster bands that are like pretty big. Okay. We're like, okay, we've interviewed two of them, but we haven't gone to that third one. Maybe they're on, maybe have like weird restrictions or they're new to it or something weird. So it's like, okay, if they throw us a couple other bands that we know will maybe hit with a few people or like are kind of name recognizable um, and the music is at least good, we'll be like, hey, we'll interview those two smaller artists. So next time when that press release comes for that third artist, we have an interview. We can be like, hey, can we interview it? We kind of get like you'll get thrown a bone because they're like, oh, you worked with us with these. We'll give you this last artist that's bigger now. It's kind of like a trade thieves thing and like a Mm -hmm. common courtesy type of thing that I have been personally like observant of in the last handful of years that I've been working with like PR and press. So it's like, I never really say no. Then there's just some people who just email and I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll just block you because you're not getting the hint <laughs> that it's not going to happen. Um, cause, Cause like, so, you know, we, uh, again, we, we talked about it on your show where we're just kind of like to these PR people, we're just like, Hey, Again, like you said, you got some pretty decent artists. So give us your give us the smaller ones. Like okay. give us the give us these guys that you've just signed up that are on their PR campaign or second PR campaign or whatever. Um, give us them and 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 do that. But you know, it's, it, it, there there are definitely some that uh, we've looked at each other and we're like, what are we going to talk about? because <laughs> like how could how could we bring this band on with 
And, uh, you know, we haven't had to do that per se. Have we? Have we? Yeah. Well, the benefit to our show is that because it's not um, it's not specific to anything, it's very open. Mm -hmm. We can generally turn the conversation into anything. Do you guys find any limitations at all in in your um, and like what you're able to oh, yeah. what are what people are expecting to talk about when they come in to talk to you? Or are you, you know, because you guys aren't really limiting either, but like, do you, have you thought about that at all? Has that been, was that a thing where you're like, okay, are we going to keep this conversation in the confines of emo and music and this, or are we going to let it kind of go anywhere? And then like, did you have that from the beginning or does that just happen every now and then? What happened at the beginning was we were, I mean, we were doing a lot of like just me and Lizzie talking about emo music and news and stuff, which was like, I mean, we wanted interviews, but if you have no show, it's like, how do you get an interview with a band Same, at all? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. We did a lot of that just to like get some episodes out and we started interviewing local Chicago people, friends of ours, just to kind of get some episodes in the bank. And then one day we made an episode where I said, Finn McKenty, this is your warning. And that was the title of the episode. And then I posted it on Instagram, like, hey, new episode out today. And he responds to it and goes, what's this about? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, dude, I was just clickbaiting your name, dude. But while I oh, have shit. you, uh, how do you, like, promote a podcast? Like, how do you get from, like, just, like, like right now we're just two hosts talking. Like, how do we get to, like, be the next level? And he's like, right. talk to the biggest name guest you can. That's it. Because nobody cares about you. Everybody only cares about the biggest name you have on your podcast. Right. And and I was like, that is true. No one cares about me. So we needed like that in of the larger guests. And and that was sort of like the the motivation of like, well, we'll take your other guests. But at the same time, we're like, well, some of these people are gonna blow the fuck up. Like Rivals yeah. is gonna blow the fuck up. We had oh. uh Julian from Loveless on. And Loveless right now is blowing the fuck up. They just sold yeah, out. Yeah, we their got first Loveless tour. on like right before he blew up. Yeah, so oh, like nice. we we're 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 lucky enough to have guests like that where it's like we don't know you, but you're just like super nice, friendly people, and we can sit and like you know try to try to get to you know pull out some new stuff, some things from from a band like that. We're also very fortunate that everybody is just so giving. Like, I mean, you guys sat with rivals; they're like the funniest, just we, like yeah. friendliest people. We had so so okay. We so, made them eat cheeseburger paste. <laughs> <laughs> we had we had rivals. So so make it on Strangerhood TV. I did a like I did a cover of Iris, and I asked mm -hmm. Mick it to play on it, and he did. Yeah, he randomly asked Mick it to play on it. I was just like, hey, <laughs> he did. Dude, like you want to you want to play on it? like I discovered so I discovered rivals by going to a red jumpsuit mm -hmm. reunion show in fucking Philly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, randomly, wife is like, hey, red jumpsuit is playing. Let, let, where, where can we go Like close? And I was like, well, Philly on a weekend. You want to do it? Cool. And I always check the opening acts. Mm -hmm. Rivals was the opening act. It was just after. Pro tip their, for all you listeners. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so like hit it off at that point so i asked make it make it came on he was one of our first guests yeah. and then kaylee she was another one of our first guests yeah, and he then, told her he had fun so she came on yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh i was like all right cool and then and then when uh he mispronounced her name like three times in the episode oh, it's great it was awful it was amazing <laughs> yeah it was awful it was beautiful <laughs> and it was so funny because, because her like, and i just kept going what yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's an awesome blooper reel with that. Yeah. Uh and then like leading up to Dark Matter, we we had them on all month. All all mm -hmm. four members yeah. we had like all and then we led into uh an yeah, awesome really... tasting where they ate chicken nugget paste and yeah. and and uh pickle cotton candy. Yeah. Yeah, that, kinda, that sounds kind of good. The wheel of Dest oh 2 God. million 2 million Scoville uh cheese balls. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you guys saw them with Josh Lambert, but mm, that was that the show kid, we went to, Lizzie. 
I think so. Yeah. yeah. Because we were like, is this the shameless kid? And they're like, yeah, it's the shameless kid. Yeah, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, I've yeah. never watched no. a show in so my life. Josh, okay. Josh Lambert is not the shameless kid, but he's but he plays opener. a song yeah. with the shameless yeah. kid. Yeah. Gotcha. That, we that, made that poor guy <laughs> that poor kid throw yeah. up threw up before his set before because his set. because uh, we made him eat a cheese ball that two point two million scovels burned his mouth. Yeah. Look. It's only one way to make him. He chose. No, he yeah, chose. Yeah, to do he it. chose. Uh, even yeah. Ashland. Yeah. Ashland did it. Yep. They chose. They all chose. They all chose to do it. Yeah. It's not oh, our fault. How how many how many all, like how many on site things do you guys usually do? Do you do a lot of like on site interviews? And we stuff? did uh Rivals in Ashland. That was that yeah. was one of our on sites that we did recently. But um yeah, it's it's been a little tough with the venues here in Chicago. Uh some of the artists are like no, we're not doing like on-site stuff or some of them. They're like, you know, we're waiting until the day of to get a response. And then they say, yeah, no, not right. today. Um, and some of them don't have a space to do it. So it's like, okay, we like get in the parking lot, I guess. <laughs> it's yeah. just like, this isn't, this isn't going to be anything <laughs> right. worth it. Um, yeah. I mean, but, like, how do you, how do you juggle? Like, you know, we, we've talked about things like, you know, we, we talked to PR people, um, about shows coming locally and stuff like that. So you guys have day to days. You got nine to fives. Um, how do you guys deal with things like that where you're like last minute? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, you can interview them at two o'clock in the afternoon. Right. Like, oh, uh, well. <laughs> we've never had anything that's been like that. And like we've had some where we get like show invites and it's like, Two o'clock, they send us a show invite. They're like, hey, be here by like six o'clock. And we're like, right. oh, okay. For me, I live out in the burbs of Chicago. So I have to hop a train that takes like an hour to get down there, then another half hour to an hour to get wherever we need to go. So I'm the more the one who is like, like I got to figure out how to get down here. But we make it work. Like, um, I, I think like that's only happened a few times. When I was an undergrad in college doing college radio, I had more of those like last minute things where like, oh shit, what's going on? Like I have a class I have to go to, but do I have enough skip days left that I could do it and go to the show and do <laughs> right, press? Right. But I mean, now it's, we don't get like the midday type of thing. If anything, like I've convinced my friends to ditch if we have like um, an artist that they like in our studio at my work. And I'm like, hey, uh, Hosier is in my office. Do you want to ditch work and come in and I'll get you in? They're like, yeah, let's go. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> That's yeah, great. I I do think and and I mean I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but like for us it's like there's two of us. So if it's like if we have to split it up, it's like Lizzie, like you go to one gig, I'm gonna go to another gig, and we'll right. both get an interview and put that out. Um, we're both like pretty flexible with that kind of thing too, because like yeah, there's just you're in a big city area. There's just too much shit going on and. Everybody right. wants it to be on the same night. So all of a sudden it's like, well, it's Friday and there's two shows on the opposite ends of the city. It's like, all right, Lizzie, flip a coin. Which one are you going to? <laughs> yeah, like we have a bunch of stuff coming up like next weekend on like Saturday. And we're like, or like even this weekend, we're like, well, do we split it up? Or like in, um, next weekend, we got like, we got two press invites. And then we usually DJ Emo Night LA here in Chicago. But since... We don't have the downstairs because they have a show downstairs. We're like, well, are we DJing? Are we not? Like, well, like, would I need to go to to go DJ and would Brian need to go do press at this other place that we're still waiting for approval on? Like, we could split it up, but like, we need to know the, what we need yeah. to split up type of thing. Yeah. Um. And like, it hasn't come to the point yet where we have to do two separate DJ nights on right. the same night, but we have two DJ consoles in case that happens because. You never know. Because we never want to turn down a paycheck. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because this isn't one. <laughs> because this is for fun and for free right. and for pain and for glory. <laughs> uh, have you found that, that DJing the Emo Nights has helped the show? Or does it not have as much of an effect on the show? And that's more of an online thing that you're building. It's built more online. Okay. Emo Night LA, like so I I my my friend does it and she was like once the emo cover band ended, she's like, Do you want to DJ on this? And I was like, Yes, but only if I can shout out the name of my podcast. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like that that like she's like, We can't pay you, like it's just for fun, but like you can DJ every time. And I'm like, Yes, I'll do it for the free PBR 
And I get to shout out the name of the podcast. At Drink the and promote, of every man. Set. Right. Yeah. Drink and promote. You're doing I'm it for like, exposure. Pay me exposure. <laughs> pay me in the fucking exposure. <laughs> pay pay the exposure. The exposure in my veins, bro. It's like, yeah, it, it has. But like in, in small amounts, no one wants to get wasted listening to songs they love and go, oh, let me listen to a podcast on the way right. home. Um, <laughs> Hey guys, I'm gonna turn on some fun shit. You better not play that podcast. <laughs> um, That's why I'm saying we should remix some of our our vocals into it. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Just kidding. Do, 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 do. So anyway, when you were doing this, do, 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 do. <laughs> I uh, I think more has come from doing the Twitch stuff over the pandemic, and we started doing the DJing there, and like, I mean we talk that's what we do so it's like right. there's music happening over here but also lizzie and i are just giving each other shit for four hours right. and people came in and just enjoyed that and so i think like it's been kind of a combination of that djing where we just do it on the internet and people can just kind of show up and if they like what we're playing and they like the the community that we're trying to foster like then then they're more interested in it but now we're trying to turn from emo podcasters into emo djs into emo podcasters into emo djs <laughs> into emo podcasters it's like this yeah, like that weird... whole like multimedia effect yeah going, right basically. yeah right. yeah <laughs> everything absolutely. promotes everything else right That's, yeah course, everything's yeah, yeah. got a funnel every yeah people don't understand that get into the um, emo social funnel how's your tiktok <laughs> game how's your tiktok game going? dude fuck tiktok generally first of you all you hate just it i'm the only one who's oh. on it Ages. Yeah, you are. I am also I've ages. Tried. <laughs> I fucking tried. No, because I'm the only one. So like, no. I handle our, I handle Brian, our your, social club. Brian, account. where's your shirtless pics holding puppies? Come on, man. No. You need those no, thirst no, no, trap no. pics. No, 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 no. With like an eyeliner on. Come on. <laughs> Do it. As we said, if if uh if if wearing if a shirt is gay, angel, then right? I'm gonna wear a shirt. <laughs> <In the arms. laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It's God, we man. split social media because I'm like, dude, I I like mental health wise and also just fuck other people on the whole fucking internet type of shit. Like I cannot be on Twitter and I cannot be on TikTok. And Lizzie's like, I got that. And I was like, thank you. I got Instagram and also Facebook. Fuck that shit. <laughs> I, I, I do find that like if you just take if you take your your social media world and you create a social media world that you want to see, mm -hmm. it's way more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Like the people the that complain, to see in the world. like, no, no, but like you see the people like complain and yeah. do like s some sort of shit or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. I'm not going to get into it. Uh, you can, you can take them out of your feed. Best piece of advice we ever got ever from one of our very first guests the marvelous Mark Miro. Yes. Oh. Former professional wrestler, former Johnny B. Bad, who became a motivational speaker. He oh, told yeah. us on our episode, he said, there are two kinds of people in the world that you can be. You can either be the kind of person that people like to see walk in a door, or you can be the kind of person people like to see walk out a door. And you have that choice. And that was told to him by Dusty Rhodes, the American dream. Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> and... That quote like has stuck with me forever. Yeah. And I've told that to like students and I've told that to everybody. They're like, man, be the type of person that people like to see walk in a door. Because I know a lot of people that I like to see. I like to, I love to watch leave. Mm -hmm. Are yeah. you leaving? Cool. I'm just going to yeah. just go, go ahead. I'm just going to watch. I'm just going to watch because this makes yeah. me happy. Yeah. You're not going to be here in a minute. That's so good. That's, oh, that's Sweet, so great. Bro. See, the that's problem how I is I go on the internet and everyone's like, oh, you want to see me leave? Fuck that. I'm staying. Like, the whole <laughs> internet is just like anti-happiness sometimes. It really is. Like, no, it you, really you is just, sometimes. Well, I mean, like, those people, you, just you kind of have to, uncall. like, create your own, like, ecosphere then at that yes. point. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You create your own ecosphere. I like I to engage. I like to engage sometimes. I like to be like, why nah. are you trying to be that guy? Nah. Let's talk about it. What do you got? Bring it to me. Yeah. I, Bring it to me. I stopped doing that. What did you call me? Explain that word. Can you define it? <laughs> what does that even you, mean? What I don't is think a you boomer? can define that word. Mm. I don't know if you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree with you, Lizzie. 
create your own ecosystem. Yeah, I mean, I will say it's it's a double sided sword with it because you can make your own echo chamber and that's great, but also then you're blocking out everything else that like disagrees with you. Right. And that's like the biggest thing about media convergence theory is that like you have to have the opposite side no matter how much it does piss you off. Otherwise, well, that's what you're the never going to learn. Crazy people grow. are doing too, and so mm-hmm. you look at them <laughs> and you're, you're like, "Oh, you're doing that thing <sighs> that I'm trying to do to be with smart people, but you're insane." The other thing too Shit. is is I don't take everybody out. You know, like if if just because somebody believes in something that somebody should be right i don't take everybody out i take the extremists out Mm -hmm. and and those people that you go you post that same message way too much (laughs) out you go um that i do yeah that i do you need a timeout but yeah right right some people (laughs) no some people no there's two things you can either uh, suspend people from your feed from 30 for 30 days or you can just completely like gone. I'm always like, Peace, whatever bitch. you just said, prove it with no caps. If you can prove it with no caps, <laughs> I am willing to read whatever you to have reconsider. To say. Yeah. No caps and no repetition. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Those two things. If you can do that, we can talk. Something so. that is in all caps <laughs> is. Um, is the font. Well, Brian's saying something. Oh, so I Brian, go, go, go ahead. No, I, I was like, I'm never going to interrupt a great ter- transition. Lizzie has been doing them in our podcast recently, and I have to call them out every time because I'm like, ooh, smooth. <laughs> Just no, 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 no. So smooth. I don't have good transitions. I like to interrupt <laughs> transitions personally. He does all, every single time. Every single time I, he'll go. I see him going for it, oh, and I'm wow. like, nah, hold on. <laughs> Hence why, what, what, whatever you were saying before, if you remember what you were saying before, please, please tell please, us. Please continue. I was going to say that, like, our, our TikTok algorithm being that, it, like, I, I registered my name on TikTok so that nobody could have my username, but I don't use it. I use the Emo Social Club one if I ever go on it. So the fact that I go on it and the fact that Lizzie goes on it means that we are essentially, like, a bisexual trans Russian mafia yeah. is, what we're, is like what our algorithm is, which I don't nice. know what I don't know why there's Russian. Mafia it's very TikTok. chaotic. It's the it's... fucking best. <laughs> but oh, yeah, I know the when he goes on sometimes because I'll get together, things and I'm like, this isn't me. I'm you guys like, together this is not are me. Black Widow. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Right. Oh, I like that. Way to go, Lizzie. Oh, we also, did uh, fun fact, last night when I was on TikTok, for some reason, um, I got really cursed, targeted, um, middle school Lizzie type uh, vampire <laughs> freaks type shit. I said, oh no, it's coming back. It's so weird to see like each side of our personality be shown to the other person and go, well, that's definitely not me. And then it's like, yeah. no, nope, that one's me. <laughs> that Vampire freaks, that's Lizzie. <laughs> Lizzie, did you have did you have the old fangs that you like you could push up into your teeth? No, and, and my teeth are it? too janky. They uh, could never fit on them. So you tried them though. So you were going yeah. for yes. it. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Just make it sure. Yes. She gave it the, the try. I have um I have vampire lore books. So As that's where we were. <laughs> I have fairy lore books. Like that's where we are, besties. So we're going to go back to your transition now and uh, let that play out before Lizzie gets too into fairy culture. <laughs> so we love vampires and stuff. We do. We, we wrote a song for a vampire movie. We talked yeah. about this. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, another thing we like to do is suck our sponsors dry. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Smooth. Mm-hmm. Smooth. Well, I, I, I figured he was like, that's why they call Continue you the cap lock. One. That's why they call yeah, you Mikey yeah. Helmets. Mikey yeah. Helmets, because you're smooth like mayonnaise. Yeah. It's the pause in between right after you say the word suck. And it's like, wherever it's like, it goes, going to be interesting. Like suck it. Yeah. Yeah. Jim loves to suck it. <laughs> That's a long pause. Where it's a very long pause. <laughs> you're oh, still sorry. paused. No, no. Where's I, it gonna I'm go? Just, Where's it know, gonna go? Where, where, Where's it gonna where, go? Where, where are we going with that? But we do have to pay some bills or a bill. <laughs> we're just leaving that. Okay, o- right, we're leaving that open. All right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, Jim pays some bills with, sure. with sucking it. All and, right. And and the podcast pays some bills with uh, a company called Podcast uh, Poddex. All right. What give Poddex a shot. is? It's a <laughs> variety of cards, right? Uh, in each deck, it's a different theme. In each in each deck is fifty cards. On each card is a different question. How to do there? Pretty good. You're still okay. going. So, You're still so, going. <laughs> so what we like to do is have our guests pick a deck from the choices from pod decks, and then pick a card from each deck random with the finger of power. I love how words when you're doing this are just everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. everywhere. So, Brian, Lizzie, uh, we have the interview deck, interview deck two, episode deck, would you rather, what the heck, what the fuck, and how dare you decks. You can each pick one. So, Brian, Lizzie, which, which ones would you like to pick? Lizzie, are you going for that? Uh, what the fuck deck? <laughs> I feel like it's between that or how dare you. <laughs> yeah. Well, how dare you is not said how dare you. It's how dare you. You have to say it that way. Like you Mr. Big Head from so. Rocco's Modern Life. Like, is it inflammatory <laughs> or is it like I'm daring you to do something? I'll tell you what. Yes. These, these decks can be anything from um, the most benign vanilla questions possible to like, excuse, what did you just say? So it really. This shouldn't be out on the internet. And we're yes. going to randomly pick. So we're going to randomly pick. Oh, yeah. Just okay. as likely to get either one. Well, I I I think we need the the how dare you deck in there, right, Lizzie? The what? The what? Yeah. The how so, how dare you? So the what? Brian, yeah. are, are you, the how the what? The how what? dare? There it is. So so there Brian, you go with the how how dare you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just think it needs to be a part of this because he okay. likes to say it to me sometimes. He's like, Lizzie, how dare you? Okay, first of all, how dare you? <laughs> Like, oh, Brian, you're old. Uh, first of all, how dare you? Listen, bestie, and you're like, how dare you call me bestie? <laughs> ageist. Ageist. Never been unpassive aggressive. Only non derogatory. <laughs> Only derogatory. Uh, and then do you Lizzie, have a feeling on a second you? one? Yeah. I'll do what the fuck then. What the fuck? Yep, I like it. And this has a fun, like, Lizzie, you probably don't know this, but this is. This is what the MTV, oh, like MTV logo used to look. Yeah, this is what it used to look like. Your dad oh probably God. has VHS. back in the olden days. In the olden like days, it. your dad probably has VHS. As when a, video a killed the radio ball. star was the very first music video <laughs> to be ever put By out. By the way, fun fact: Ricky Rackman said, "Hey, I'll come on your podcast." Never answered back. <laughs> Too busy. Old school MTV. Too busy doing uh, nothing. Too Listen, doing I I used to roses. work with a uh, a v, <laughs> an old school VJ on MTV um because he has a radio show and tell me why I had to have a programming director talk to this well old enough man to pay attention in the middle of the meeting. So I really don't <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Nice. All right, so Mike is going to uh, shuffle these and while he shuffles these I would just tell everybody listening that you can go to poddex.com and you can check out these decks plus all their other ones they always have new stuff coming out they also have an app you can check that out they have cool swag they have nice t-shirts their t-shirts aren't hard on the nipples they are Drax they are approved soft important. shirts and that is an important thing if you've ever bought a concert shirt that feels like it's going to destroy your nipples and then the entire graphic is going to come off after two washes mm -hmm. this is not those so when you pick out your shirt and you pick out your pod decks, go ahead and put in the promo code BACON. Because everything is better with bacon. And that not only gets you 10% off, but it helps the show. Thank you guys so much for doing all of that. And we're back. And we're and we're back. Uh, so <laughs> who took uh, – Brian, you took the how dare you. You took the how dare you. So the finger of power. I'm going from my left to my right, your right to your left – you tell me when to stop, and that will be your question, sir. You know, people never wait a really long time to say stop. Yeah. All right, there we are. I feel like it's like, no, nah, I'm going to go early. It's like, Bestie. no, I'm going to wait. We're all just going to sit here. We've had people paused. going, 
back both ways. So ah, no worries on that. Brian, I'm not, I'm not the biggest asshole. Then. <laughs> Brian, uh, when was the most embarrassing time that you ever passed gas? <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> He's really contemplating this one. Yeah, I mean, well, like, it we, doesn't... you know what? We all have one. We all have a few, but then I mean, like... I've definitely been in arguments with a romantic partner. Right. <laughs> Just like <laughs> proving your point. Fucking happen. Move on. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> fucking. Fucking. It's a let natural it go. thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you to let it go. I was letting it go. We're all, you know, <laughs> right. Now we have to live with this moment and we have to make it work. Uh, we, you know what? There's time before this moment and there, there's yeah. going to be time after this moment. Yeah. We In the same way the that we measure time, BC <laughs> and AD. Right. BC, AD, pre Holocaust, 9 11. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God, 9 11? 9 11 comes up way too often in our lives. Um, but I would compare my uh, farts in the middle of an argument to a 9-11 style event. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Brian. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's rough. You know what? Yeah. We all we all hold everyone that is uh, affected in special places in our heart. Yeah. For the time I, I understand that you're from New York, but I am going to make one more joke where I go, yeah, it's the same thing. I just blame it on George Bush and I move on. <laughs> Wah wah wee wah. George, and now we can uh, go by on the, way, the next question. All right. Lizzie, Lizzie, right. Uh, George Bush was the president of the United States. Yeah, he was the year you were born. Wait, is that true? No. He was actually he was the son of another George Bush. Right. Oh, that was no, she was mm, Lizzie, well, who's the president when you were born? I don't know. I was born in ninety four. Go on to the that next was, question. Uh, I feel too so sad. That was Clinton. Yeah, right? I think so. Was that Clinton? I think, it was I think uh, Bush was 90. Oh, I was fucking 10. God damn it. All right, let's fan these cards out. I was about to say, <laughs> Bessie, I don't know. <laughs> Lizzie. Lizzie, I'm going from my left to my right. You're right to your left. You tell me okay. when to stop. <laughs> uh, Stop. All right. Lizzie, what is the most embarrassing or worst thing that your parents ever caught you doing? Mm. This podcast. I <laughs> They're not listening. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I never really did anything... I guess oh, maybe stop. it was like one time I got locked out of our bathroom at our old house and I had to climb through the window because nobody could open the door. So I had to climb through the window and I broke the 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 dispenser for the toilet paper because I had to shimmy on out and go back through the window and I fell. And my parents were like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, door wouldn't open. And I open it. They're like, you're a fucking idiot. And I'm like, I mean, yeah, but <laughs> um, but that was probably it. I mean. There's nothing really. You were a really well behaved child, weren't you? Mm -hmm. You're sitting there with your two. I wasn't allowed bandana. outside of my house alone <laughs> until I was 13. She doesn't know who so. Tupac is. <laughs> Tupac was a rapper that was. <laughs> in the olden days. The olden days. In the time before. The only thing I can think of is that Lizzie knows more than us about all of this stuff musically. And I'm like. 100%. Listen, 100%. the only reason we're joking is like. God damn, Lizzie definitely like knows so much more than us. Yeah, yeah. We lived it, so we take it for granted. Mm -hmm. She she yes. did not. She's so like, she you guys not. are idiots. Listen, my my mom met Michael Jordan when she was pregnant with me. So by proxy, you met Michael Jordan. It transferred. Yeah, it's, I met Michael oh, Jordan as a me. in yeah. utero. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm cooler. Nice. You were nice. in Space okay. Jam. I was in Space Jam. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> You weren't in the sequel, right? Because I know how you feel no, about sequels. I was not in the sequel. I did not participate in Jam. that. <laughs> it was way after Space Jam. It absolutely was. Um, so we, we didn't even get to talk about this on the main podcast that much or anything like that. But real quick, 
we like to talk about bacon. We Everybody's do. bacon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Brian, Lizzie, Brian, you you do the uh, the the band thing a lot. Lizzie, you are a journalist. Uh, you do stuff in media. What's the unplug? Is it is it emo social club, or is it something else? Like, do you guys like? If there was one thing you could be asked in an interview about. One thing you could talk about that you never get to right. talk about. That you're like, what is fuck, that? I could talk about this for hours. What What is that? I'm going to let Lizzie go first, and then I'm going to let her say what mine probably is. Because he knows. Right. I know what you're going <laughs> to fucking say it is. So, Lizzie, you go first. He knows too well. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm a big nerd when it comes to reading. So um, I really like um, classic literature. So I would be able to talk about symbolism and metaphors and like Greg Gatsby, Lolita, um, J.D. Salinger books, everything like that. And I could talk about it for hours because um, I love reading. Same thing with Chuck Palahniuk books, the symbolism and metaphors and the writing styles and the prose and (laughs) My favorite author is Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley. And God, that bitch is like the gothic one out of everybody. <laughs> and she is my favorite. I will fight to the death for the <laughs> novel of Frankenstein. Um, so I can talk for hours about liter- like classic literature. Uh, I originally wanted to be an English major. And when I worked at Caribou Coffee, my first job when I was 17 in 2012, the dude, the, one of my coworkers was like, I don't know if that's really going to pay you well. Maybe go into communications. And here we are. But I still love talking about (laughs) books Um, because behind me, I have a lot of books, but I have two bookshelves of books that are um, like from here to the top on either side of this fireplace mantle. And then I have another bookcase up in my room that's filled with books, too. So I have two questions then, since you're a reader. Why can nobody get if with Shelley, why can nobody get a Frankenstein movie correct? And also, why did Fight Club do so well and choke fail? Mm. Um, I were to think for Frankenstein, I think people had just did it so much in like the B-movie style that right. nowadays people are like, oh, it's whatever. And because I also but they feel- they tried like to do it in a big film they style. They tried to do it. Mm. I they think- They tried like- to do it. I mean, they had a good cast. They had everything. But what the fuck happened? I just feel like Frankenstein as like a whole is one like a very underrated novel because yeah. at least when I was in high school, the only way that I read Frankenstein um, was through a separate class that I had to test into that was like American studies. So it was like history and English put together. It was like two hours long every day. Okay. So like I was only able to do that there. And then I did more when I was an undergrad and it was like an intense, like classic literature class. And you took one book the entire semester, you analyze everything about it. So it's not in a regular curriculum that I feel mm-hmm. like everybody's read like Catcher in the Rye. Everybody's read of mice and men. Everybody's right. read Hamlet. Everybody's read Romeo and Juliet. We've read, all read Macbeth. Like we get it. Okay. It's done. Shakespeare, sad boy. Okay. Get it. But like, we never like explored more into there. So unless you were, like, really niche into it, you didn't explore it. So, like, in the mainstream media, people are, like, looking at this. And it's a complex storyline because you have to look at the monster, which is being created by Frankenstein, the doctor, is, like, this misunderstood person that's sad, lonely, trying to figure its shit out. And then it's like, everybody hates me. I just kind of want to like run away and fucking die and marry Shelly in her real life because of Lord fucking Byron fucking around with everybody around her. She's like, I want to kind of fucking die too. Got that shit. But that didn't translate over well. I think now if they try to do it, it would translate over well. But you have to like break it down for that complex reasons. And mm-hmm. it's the same way like Watchmen the movie wasn't really well because Watchmen oh, has yeah, so many different right. variations and angles yeah. with its political commentary, its socioeconomic commentary, and just overall like personality-based commentary that you can't you can't fit that into a movie. That's why the HBO show did like 10 times better because it's broken up and they focus on one thing. 
but yeah. and it worked it just worked better than like a, a two-hour movie that they said oh everything goes shoots and booms because that's not what right that's not well, what you, it's is. who you're aiming for too if you're aiming for like a certain if you're trying to make a successful film you're trying to kind of make it broad enough to get everybody and watchmen in the superhero genre is trying to get people that are it's, like yeah going to see a superhero movie and it's not a super it's not movie. a superhero movie. you know you need that niche audience that one might have read the book or two might have been interested in it you know like that kind of thing too right and then like with going to like fight club too fight club did well as a movie because it was like this is a boys club thing brad like pitt. blood brad pitt everything like that and like that was his <laughs> height when he was big a star and I mean, when I talk to Brian, I'm like, "Have you read Fight Club?" He's like, "I've seen the movie." And I'm like, "Okay, oh, but have no, you read it?" Different, right? Oh, totally. So different, very different. different. Um, but like, I think the same thing. Like Chuck Palahniuk books, like all together, because I have most. You can't see them. I have most of them behind me. Yeah. Um, but like his stuff is very like dry, witty, metaphorical, satirical, and very dark and like disgusting yeah. and fucked up. And that's kind of what Choke was way more than Fight Club. So my favorite Chuck Palahniuk book is Diary, which is absolutely fucking wild. Yeah, and crazy. Yeah, it, to that translate too. that into a real movie, I think people would not be able to like comprehend it, and it wouldn't do well. So I think that's why Choke. I heard that Invisible Monsters is supposed to be getting a movie adaption, but really? I think that will be like mellowed out so much because that mo that book is fucking insane. Like yeah. giving a dude like female hormones because he completely fucked like somebody else, like absolutely insane like i feel like that would cause more like you know so social commentary wars than anything right yeah, yeah, yeah. so i like think it's things like that like people don't want to get into that type of stuff that's that, uh, you know like i know we're talking chuck, chuck blotney but i i feel like kick-ass suffered the same fate yeah okay where it was yeah, just yeah. like hey this is too heavy that like there's stuff that's too heavy so like the first movie was very close to the comic book. Yeah. Once you hit the second movie and they were dealing with like real life issues and stuff like that, it's like mm. I really liked the second movie. I really did. I thought, I it, was thought really it was good. good. I, I, thought I, it was I don't well think it, I don't think it was as good as the, the second book. So well, I both yeah. of those movies, so I liked them. What yeah, uh, I like them. What movies are ever as good as because I look like McLovin. Brian. The well, only movies that are as good movies. that are better than the books are like Lord of the Rings because you don't have to read all the uh, sing songs. <laughs> okay, I understand, and I do love those books, but like, I the movies, I and the director's cuts of the movies, the long ass movies are fantastic, but man, the books they start to get long, they start to feel mm -hmm. long. Oh man, do they start to feel long? Brian, Except you, for the Hobbit, the Hobbit movies sucked ass. The book, the book, was, great. The book was great. The Brian, movies were ass. Yes, yes. Uh, Brian, you don't seem to be a book guy. What is your thing? No, I don't know how to read. Um, <laughs> Obviously, you, <laughs> Lizzie, spell your, you spell your name with I've stars. Never learned on it. To read. I know, I know. You spell brain wrong. Um, I have nothing behind me either. But uh, Lizzie, what do you think I'm going to answer this question with? Oh God! It's not Shadow with a Gun at the very least. No, um, God damn it. <laughs> it's the funniest meme. Not Shadow with a Gun <laughs> ever. <laughs> I think it's the best thing you've ever told me, honestly. Uh, um, God, that's the. You always make fun of me for two fucking things, and you're not even saying what yeah, they are. Yeah, for being right a goddamn fucking weeb. No, I don't like anime that much. That much. I love anime, but I don't like it that much. Uh, two things I do in my off time that are like not something that you would normally do in your off time. One of them is Excel spreadsheets. And uh, another one is I just really fucking like infrastructure. I think infrastructure fucking rules. Uh, so I play this right. video game where you're like building a factory. And all I do in it is just assemble infrastructure so that the factory operates correctly. It is what is the name of this game? Satisfactory. It is in beta. It's not wow. like released yet. It's not a fully released video game. I've just been following it for like three years and I'm just like building a bunch of train lines and shit. And God damn it, dude. One day I'm going to run for office. I'm going to run for office for infrastructure. For and I'm going to fucking change the city. I'm going to change nice. the city around, motherfuckers. Nice. This is my platform. Uh, right. 
do you, do yeah, you, I mean, you play I mean, Civilization at all? Yeah, I've I've been or playing you, that actually the last couple of days, and I'm just like, I'm gonna spend hours on this and then lose. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, my dad was like back in the day. Uh, I think we got him Civilization two, and that dude like we had a one bathroom house uh, mm-hmm. when I was growing up, and you know I'd wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. 12, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, and he'd be on that computer just like, Dad, what are you, it's fucking late, and he'd be like, I'm trying out a different way. I'm not going to be diplomatic tonight. I'm just trying no. a new way, man. And then, like, the next night, I'm going to be diplomatic tonight. Yeah. And it's just like, wow. <laughs> Fuck, Dad. Like, you're a video game junkie. And he's like, yeah. no, 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 no. No. I can go to bed. I want, go to bed. You know, whatever I don't want, worry yeah. about it. I declared war on Russia, but don't worry about it. Okay. It doesn't mean exactly. Exactly. Uh, I think really video cool. games are like the main one, though. Video games, like in general, like that's my like nostalgia, my history, my culture. So, are you more into like, are you more into classic games? Like, you doing like Raspberry Pi type stuff, doing like the classics, or are you into more current gaming? I am mostly so satisfactory is taking up all my fucking time. Like I yeah, just am okay. like I'm like that is a, that it just needs all of my attention. Uh, factory isn't gonna factory itself. I uh, <laughs> back in the day, like N64, PlayStation. Uh, I actually just uh, just yesterday because I wanted to get Shadow the Hedgehog, the yeah. GameCube game. Because right. I need to show Lizzie an actual video game where Shadow <laughs> just has a fucking gun. Somebody <laughs> made this game and it exists. And I'm like, Lizzie, okay, fine. We're going to play it. Um, but I also got two games that you can't get like anywhere really is uh, GoldenEye 007 and Perfect yes. Dark for N64. Oh, I was like, awesome. man, that was, the, that was the childhood. That yeah, was yeah. the entire time there on N64 playing those two games. Golden uh, Eye, Golden Eye parties. Dude. Yes. Unfair. Well, unfair to be odd job or not unfair. Uh, I had a friend who played odd job every game. We let yeah. him have it, and we usually beat him. I don't think it's okay. unfair. All right. I think right. I think if you're a good player, you can you can you know you can beat it's up. It's a hot short take. I've heard anything. I've heard I've heard both. I've heard both things. I've heard people be like, you can't fucking be odd job. Yeah. Like, it is know, unfair. I can, I can shoot odd job in the head. But it also, yeah. Yeah. I actually, uh, like, for for nostalgia reasons and stuff like that. So I got a Raspberry Pi. Um, and my wife, Jen, is like, we've talked about it on this podcast too. She's an intense, intense right. Super Mario World player. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's hard to watch. Like I get, I get so much anxiety, right? And um, the Raspberry Pi, for whatever reason, because uh, that was like the first game that you could start saving your games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Raspberry Pi would just completely clear everything randomly. So she had gotten <laughs> the furthest that she's ever gotten before, and it cleared it. And she's like, "That's it." I'm fucking done with this shit. And oh my um, God. so what I do have is something called a Retron, which is pretty badass. <laughs> it's like, it's a really cool, like gaming console. You could put an NES Genesis right. Super Nintendo cartridge into it. So I legit bought a Super Mario World cartridge. Because you're a good husband. That's mm-hmm. why. Yeah. It was, it cost <laughs> me 35 bucks. Right. Mm-hmm. In that's the, the year 2020, better than a gift card, that's for sure. That's the price. Yeah. That's happiness. It's thirty five dollars. Yeah, right. I got that for her. Five. But you know what I did? My my big mistake was getting aftermarket controllers. Okay. Mm. Oh, what kind of asshole are you? Fuck you, Jim. Should have gotten a gift card. <laughs> So I end up spending the extra the game, five bucks. I get her the game. <laughs> I get her these controllers that look like Super Nintendo controllers. And they plug into Super Nintendo, and she's like, "This is amazing." So we did. I think we had an episode that night, and we ended early. I went back downstairs. I'm like, "How's it going?" She's like, "The select button doesn't work." 
Wish.com fucking controllers, man. That's yeah. Wish.com controllers. So I, I had to go out and buy legit old school SNES controllers this happens? week. Now you had to pay mm-hmm. twice. Well, the first one like was two controllers. Right. How often do you use the select button? Come on. Let's All the be time. I Never. think that there it it's a fake button. It is a fake button. <laughs> it's it fake. is a fake button. You start two to cost, pause. Select is is not used. Right. Two cost uh, fifteen dollars. Yeah. Um, I went to the video game trading post. Uh, here not, locally, not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> We'd love you to be. They've got our card. We talked. We talked. Uh, long and short of it, a very used. Nintendo right. controller. Twenty five dollars. But you, you know got what? Money. It worked. You got money. Yeah. Look at this. The it danger worked. room you built. You got money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I worked for the company that gave me this shit. Brian, so. what's your what's your golden eye weapon of choice? Ooh. Okay. One of the only names that sticks out is the Clob. Uh yeah. <laughs> that one sticks out. Yeah. Um because it looks like an old, like, uh, like um, one of those grease pencils. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like somebody, like, who has never heard of a gun was asked to draw a gun. Right. <laughs> it just doesn't look real. Um, yeah. The thing was, like, Perfect Dark, I thought, was, like, just, like, the, like, excellent successor to it. Because it took everything oh, right. they did with it. And they gave every gun two functions. And then they just, like, went off the deep end and just had a bunch of ideas. Like... What if there was a gun that was disguised as a laptop and you could throw it and it would stick to the wall and became a sentry gun? And I was like, do I get to outsource my kill? Because I'm about to outsource all of this shit. And then they were like, oh, and by the way, in the game, there's a cheat, unlimited ammo for that sentry. And I was like, yes, you son of a bitch. It's one of the hardest to get. Yeah, I'm in. (laughs) I love that. My my uh, my golden eye weapon was proximity mines. That was always oh, my favorite. Yeah, because oh, you know, mines, like uh... yeah, yeah. After a while, you memorized every board, mm-hmm. and so yeah, and you knew you'd have people. Oh, you're just your house. you turn them on. You just litter the stage with them. You're running around like oh, a yeah. fucking. You're. It's like it's like my Joker origin story was proximity mines in Golden Eye Double O Seven as a kid. Yep, <laughs> proximity mines <laughs> everywhere, and then you go up. You 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 take the one level where you go up and you you hide in the hidden wall. And then you just mm-hmm. stay in there and you just watch people walk into your shit. Yep. And you're just like, yep. <laughs> I'm amazing. Yeah. It's like another way, like Monopoly, of making all of your friends fucking hate you. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Like, dude, I didn't even get any yet. What am I supposed to do? You're just in a wall. It's like, I don't know. I'm did, never you ever, did you ever suffer the indignity, I did, of someone coming to your house, sitting down on, on your Nintendo 64? Holding one of your controllers and just kicking your ass in Goldeneye on your own fucking game. <laughs> because that was a hard thing for me. <laughs> yeah. So I, me, I had uh, our group of four growing up. We all had N64s. We all had four controllers. I would always bring my controller. You always got to bring your own controller. Yes. I'm like, I don't care. They're like, oh, I have it. I'm like, plug mine in. Right. Plug mine Guess in. Guess what? This one's mine. There are many I never, others like it. I but never this had, one is mine. I had I never had N64, but I did have my own N64 controller. Because mm-hmm. you knew. Because of this. There you go. Hey, you want to come <laughs> over and play Goldeneye? I do. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> my weapon at my side. It was, and it was Goldeneye. Proximity mines. Lizzie, Goldeneye and, was a game based on James Bond, who was an old uh, old time. Oh, I know. I mean, <laughs> like, listen. I played Dreamcast. My dad torrented Dreamcast games yeah. for us when I was a kid. But I played the Donald Duck Dreamcast time. game. And time. Crazy what? Taxi. <sighs> Crazy Taxi. Was Wait, great. hold on, hold what on. A great soundtrack. She just said torrented mm-hmm. when I was a kid. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think that's my the way dad. To end this like, episode. my that's dad like, taught wow. me from a very, very young age how to use LimeWire, how to use BitTorrent. He was like, "We don't pay for any of these." And I said chill because i didn't know i was fucking like six years old right right 9 11 just happened i was like i don't know oh, you gotta you gotta <laughs> 9/11 happened. i'm not paying for shit 
<laughs> we were at war. I ain't paying for my games. I was at war. You want me to pay for Crazy Taxi on the Sega Dreamcast? On the no, Sega thank Dream you, sir. Well, I also had the N64. I had PS1. I had PS2. I had GameCube. We had the Wii. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay, the all boys, right. my brothers had Xbox. I didn't play Xbox, but I played PS2. No. Disney Skateboard on GameCube forever, though. That's my Disney game. Disney Skateboard. Wow. Nice. wow. I didn't even know that it was a thing. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a hardcore one. That's a that's a throwback. That one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Skateboard. I played it like stupid crazy. That's where I heard Alistair for the first time and Temple <laughs> Plan. Yo, some of the some of the games had the best soundtracks. Like Crazy Taxi had a great yeah. soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Grand Theft Auto always had great soundtracks. But like, I wouldn't know. Like Tony, Tony Hawk. There's, there's yeah. literally yeah. a I Tony know. Hawk. There's certain bands I wouldn't even know. Yeah. Yeah. I, that Tony Hawk certain... showed up too. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. The Tony Hawk cover band. Tony Hawk showed up. In the yeah. It was in like them. London, right? Yeah. Wow. Nice. Tony Hawk's the guy who's just like, I made a ton of money off of a video game and doing one trick once. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like he also did you know that Tony Hawk has had five wives and he has like an absurd amount of children because he has had five wives? Yeah. A lot of oh. hawks out there. Well, you know. A lot of many you know? hawks. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. One it's day he'll get up to nine hundred wives. Oh There's no. A migration. There's a migration of hawks. Yeah. yeah, there you go. There you go. That's what they call it every time they move. <laughs> so guys uh we do have to say yeah we could talk for a lot longer that but, uh, yeah we could talk <laughs> for a long time we've done this um we definitely want to have you back on yeah. because yeah. the consumers love this i i'm sure of it uh mm -hmm. or they but, hate it but or they, or they, yeah or they hate it or they're haters or they, hate it, or yeah. they absolutely hate it <laughs> But, but we know a little bit more about you, and we know how to get to the core right away. Yeah, that's true. So that means episode number two with you guys is, is just going to be that much better. Right. But until then, can you please let all the consumers know where they can find everything emo, emo Social Club and you guys? EmoSocialClub.com is our main location. You can find all of our podcast episodes on every podcast channel that you go to. Uh, Emo Social Club on Instagram, X Emo Social Club X on Twitter and TikTok. That's where you can talk to Lizzie. Yeah. Because I don't go on those fucking websites. And you can find me on the Instagram one if you want to talk to somebody like me. But on the we will, I may also jump in on the Instagram too. Yeah, usually in the and same conversation funny. with it's me. It's very funny. It's like. It's like uh, yeah, split personality emo social club. Uh, yeah, we are we're on all of the networks that you listen to. To Bacon is my pod, and we require a five star tribute uh, in the same way that you provided five stars to Bacon yes. is my pod. So uh, we we require you to definitely give them five stars. Yeah, just yeah. do it. Don't be just a dick. do it. Don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Yeah, you've already been yeah. inside this podcast, and now in order to leave the podcast, you must deliver a five star tribute. Indeed. Yes. I like that. Five like drink that. minimum. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. As it should be. Hopefully we get up to you guys or, um, hey, if you guys want to come to New York, let us know. We always do. We'll, we'll, we'll host a uh, an emo social whatever night. I'm there once a year anyway because I go visit family in Indiana. Family. I got True. family in Indiana. There you so go. True. I'm, always, I'm always around, so I'll let you guys yeah. know Let's get some drinks. around. Yeah, and, let's uh, do it. We'll we'll hook up for some drinks. But in the meantime, yes, we never we didn't tell them there was in the a test. times of mean. Oh. We didn't tell them there was a test. Well, we didn't even do that. We didn't even do the test thing. Yeah, we didn't do that. We didn't shtick. even ask the question. We didn't do that shtick. We didn't even ask the question. The is our episode. shtick? That's the most important question. You should ask yourself every day. Every day. Mm -hmm. Every time you wake up and you look around at your life and you go, oh, I like this. Oh, I like that. Well, what the fuck makes it even better? Mm -hmm. What is it that makes my food tastier? What is it that makes my life a little bit better? What is it that makes the thing I do a cooler thing that I fucking do? What is it? What's your bacon? What is your bacon? The way you just described that, cocaine. But... Uh... <laughs> It's cocaine could that. be your bacon. <laughs> I don't cocaine think that is, Steve. It is not. It is not. 
It is cocaine not. is a lot of people's bacon. Yeah, it is not uh, ours. It's not our. It's not our bacon. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're square as fuck. Um, so that's it. Cocaine used to be my bacon. You, you, didn't, <laughs> you didn't have it's to not answer. Anymore. Yeah. It's not anymore. This, uh, this is over. Yeah. yeah this is it. Our episode is over. Now. It's, it's cocaine now. <laughs> it's cocaine Drugs. now. All right. Sorry, you're on record as drugs cocaine. Drugs is my bacon. <laughs> Hardcore drugs. Right. No, Ryan. Oh, God. <laughs> you know what? We ride. We roll. Let's just go with it. <laughs> Guess what? That's the intro. I know what your present's going to be. <laughs> yeah. This okay. is why we don't like do Brian get... answer things sometimes. Do they have, do they have I gift cards? People... Welcome back. Welcome back. Shit. He left enough room for I did. Me. Shit. Welcome back. Mm-hmm. Welcome back. Welcome back. And we're back. And we're back. And we're back. We're back. Yep. Here we are. Um, back again. So it was a lot of fun hanging out with those guys. Yeah. It's a long episode. But it was. That's why you this know is going to be short. Right. So you get you get podcasters together, and you're going to have just a lot of words. People that a lot talk. Of, a lot of things happening. People talk for a living. So without further ado, Jimsy, where can they find you? Quick rundown. Jimmy G Shoes on all the socials. You can find my band Craving Strange at CravingStrange.net. There you can find all of our socials and our new music and everything else. You can find Bacon Is My Podcast at BaconIsMyPodcast.com where you can find all of our stuff, episodes, uh, swag. You can find all those promos that we did earlier. You can find Bacon Is My Passion, our music. You can find all that. You can find it also on all streaming platforms. Check them out. Listen to them, like them, give us some likes, give us some love. And if you're wanting to see what we look like and you haven't yet, jump over to StrangerhoodTV.com or YouTube.com slash StrangerhoodTV and you can watch all episodes of Bacon to My Podcast plus What's Your Bacon to Seven Questions. Mike, where can they find me? Yes. Well, also, don't forget, five-star reviews. Five-star oh, reviews only. are super important yeah. because it helps us help. Like beat the rag- algorithm. Right. Don't be a jerk, uh, face. Burger. Don't be a jerk. It costs you nothing. And also, uh, give our buddies at Emo Social Club a nice five star. Yeah, ten stars all together. Ten stars all together. And you know what it costs? It costs you zero. Nothing. Zero like dollars. Half a second. And zero cents. Half a so second twice. So go one ahead. Second. Do it. Uh, me personally, on all the social medias, uh, at me my own self mike my band something heavy is gonna be cooking up something uh soon but you can catch us on all the socials at something heavy music and also on all the streaming platforms something heavy without further ado don't forget to ask yourself every single day one super duper Duper important question. Jim, what question is that? What's your bacon? Woo! Well, peace.